Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see everybody here this morning. Uh, I am Scott Edinburgh, as most of you are aware. I am the Director of Worship and Music here at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church, and I am welcoming you to worship this morning. Uh, this morning, uh, Pastor Aaron is on sabbatical. Uh, it's a small sabbatical, mind you, but with the family, enjoying some more vacation time. But uh, she will be with us now next Sunday. Um, what I'm unclear on, since I was out of town this week, I don't know exactly when she's coming into the office. I'm still picking up and catching up a little bit. So, so um, call the office. Sonia's going to know what's going on if you have any concerns, and we'll get you pointed in the right direction to solve whatever issues that may come up this week. It'll be fine. We'll take good care of you. Um, uh, it's been a very interesting week, having just returned from the Association of Lutheran Church Musicians uh, Biannual National Conference. I'm waiting for Patty to be able to catch up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so uh, lots of kind of interesting experiences, wonderful things, seeing folks that you don't normally see. And, um, I'll, and Les is going to be so happy I'm going to get my tidings article in and talk about that a little bit now in this next month's tidings article. Um, but it's always an interesting time spending a week with 300 Lutheran musicians. So there's, you know, anybody wants to hear some stories, I'd be more happy to share with you a couple of stories. Um, some announcements for the week. Um, we have um, uh, the Deaf Ministry um, uh, Dine to Donate this week, Wednesday the 12th, at the Village Tavern. Um, you can see on the screen here, there's a couple of details, all right? It says there that forms are available on the POP Facebook page. It's all day, so you can even have lunch, or you can have a mid-afternoon snack, or even dinner. So if you have got an opportunity to come and support our wonderful um, ministry, uh, deaf ministry, that would be a wonderful way to do that. So we'd love for you to do that. Um, there's some other announcements that you can take a look at um, uh, on uh, the Wednesday um, email, so do that. But let me remind you that we are still making sure that everybody gets registered with Realm. You should have your invitation. Um, Leslie is absolutely wonderful in walking through folks to make sure you're comfortable. Don't be uncomfortable with the idea of getting on board. And so go ahead and talk to her, but we want you to absolutely see, get your... Um, uh, uh, your, your uh, account set up and have it all ready to go. So um, we have um, Pastor John Lang with us this morning presiding over worship and we welcome him and we are certainly looking forward to hearing the word through him. Let the spirit move us this morning and so with that let us take a moment and prepare our hearts for worship and begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, and whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned and have hurt ourselves. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water. When we thirst, God offers boundless grace. When we fail, claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. 
Spirit be with you all. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house. And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest <coughs> and peace to God's people on earth. to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading for the sixth Sunday of Pentecost is from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king, king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life. Grace. 
and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The Lord is full of compassion. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord is gracious and full of The second reading <clears throat> is from the book of Romans, chapter 7. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Word of God, word of life. according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory 
glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, but you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he is a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At the same time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and they have been revealed, and you have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And one no, no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Holy wisdom, holy word. I speak to you in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I live at Lutheran Village in Luther Village in, in Arlington Heights in the assisted living section called Hearthstone. At 78, I'm the youngest guy there. I had a stroke right after Easter two years ago, and that left me unable to care for my wife, who suffers from dementia. She now lives in the memory care part of Lutheran Home, where she is well cared for. I am the most independent of the assisted living residents at the other end of the building. I tell you this in part because of my awkwardness in getting around. My left side doesn't work exactly as I would like to have it work. But mostly because one of the unique features of Lutheran Home is called Shepherd's Flock. Right next door to my area is a daycare center section for infants and preschoolers of employees, and many come from the neighborhood around. Whenever these little people walk through our part of the unit, as they did on Wednesday before I was writing this, everyone else stops. We who are called the grandmas and grandpas take time to watch and to listen as our little friends go by on their way to play. I love the infants especially. They ride in this great big cart where eight of them sit in this big yellow thing. And they're all in seats and they look at us like, what's going on? They often look dismayed and even a bit frightened at all of us paying attention to them. Well, I mention these little ones today because they are the wise ones that Jesus speaks of in today's gospel. He says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. And I wore my stole today that has all the children of the world on it just to remind me what I'm doing. It strikes me that we who ooh and ah over those little people who pass among us must be rather overwhelming them. I, for example, I'm a little bit large, and I'm really conscious of the fact that I can't get down to their level. My knee will not, pre not allow that to happen. It reminds me also that when I visit other people, I'm always towering over people in beds or in wheelchairs. And I try to change, but I can't unless there's a chair nearby. But you know, the opposite should be true in the case of these little ones. We ought to be in awe of them. Because God has already given them what we often lose, what we often lost or seek or even deny. Infants already know things about loving 
and caring at what it means to live with others, even as old grandmas and grandpas. Albert Einstein looks at this in a different way. He challenged us to retain the curiosity of children, saying, do not grow old no matter how long you live. Never cease to stand like curious children before the great mystery into which you were born. Perhaps the, single, the simple trust and curiosity go hand in hand. Now, Jesus uses infants and children twice in today's reading. These are the same little ones that he calls to himself in Mark 10, where he says, let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never end it. This is somewhat of a, para a parallel in Mark's gospel because it too is set in the midst of Jesus' teaching in the midst of those who are, have come to test him about certain things that they believe have to be true. In Mark's account, the challenges, you may recall, are about divorce. Matthew records this time of discord when those who don't really like Jesus, who are trying to test him, are questioning him about eating with tax collectors and sinners. He's a friend with these people. In the first, this first example of Jesus, uses is actually one I can identify with. I remember from my own childhood. He says this is the way his opponents are bickering. To repeat again, like the children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. I want you to notice one thing. These children have already played the flute and they have already wailed in mourning. They acted expecting a response that would have others joining with them. As, any as an only child, I remember sometimes sitting on the, on the curb on the street corner or going to the playground with a ball and glove in the hope that at least one somebody would respond by playing catch with me. Sometimes I tossed that ball up in vain. Maybe it was because I was left-handed, they didn't understand, I don't know. But there were those times when I did find a playmate or two, and we would toss the ball around for hours. It's the loneliest times, though, that I remember most. Look at it this way, the way I think Jesus means for us to understand. When the offer is made to take part in a good thing, walking away from it is not the right thing to do. The fault lies with the, not with the one who seeks to join, to, to, not with the one who invites, but with the one who, seeks, who, don't, who don't seek to join in. I'll get it right. The fault lies with those who either pay no attention or to ridicule the one who makes the invitation. I mean, one time, so a group of boys ran up to me, took my ball, and ran away. That wasn't good at all. There are some who might reply, if we can't do it our way, then we just won't do it at all. So what happens if I try to get others to play baseball with me and they want to play football instead? Or what if they say, you're too little to play ball with us? All these responses contradict the invitation given. It is after making this analogy that Jesus speaks of the Father's will being revealed to infants. Joining this is a realization that somewhere along the line, that what is revealed to infants does not always stay with us. All of you, all of us have been children. Remember? Some of you have had children and grandchildren and maybe great-grandchildren. You've just recently had vacation Bible school here. We all know that kids are not perfect. They can be disobedient. They can fight with one another. They can be rascals. But they can also be little angels. And we're just like them, aren't we? Or maybe it is we who have taught them to be as they are. Or as we are or we think we ought to be or have, have been now. It's a mark of our brokenness. The brokenness we call sin. 
years and years ago, it seems like centuries now, when the ELCA was first formed, our first bishop, Herb Chilstrom, did a, a video series called Mosaic. Some of you may have seen it and remember it. He stood on, lake, on the seashore after Hurricane Andrew or one of those terrible, and he had a stick in his hand amidst all the ruins. And he said very simply, sin is a, he snapped a stick, a broken relationship with God. I couldn't find a stick this morning, I would have done that. Amy Lindemann Allen comments this week in Sundays and Seasons, Jesus and Paul both know that the power to do good not only exists within all of the faithful, but has already begun to take shape. And the challenge is when confronted with evil or disagreement to continue to pursue good. The wonderful thing is that in today's gospel for Matthew, Jesus offers a way beyond what we might consider to be sort of the, the normal human behavior. Jesus offers an invitation. Just like the children sitting in the marketplace, God in Christ has already come to us in order to make right our broken relationship with God. So Jesus is saying, as he says elsewhere, as he says in this place, come to me. Come to me, all you who weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I always used to worry about that yoke, because often they, they picture an ox yoke on, on the covers of the bulletins for this one. This is a yoke. The stole is a yoke. I want to tell you, sometimes it's very heavy. And sometimes, well, it's very light. I've been at this for 40 years. It would have been 50 if I stayed in seminary the first time. I was a dropout who had to return later. I've been in some congregations where this was a joy to wear, and I've been in a congregation where it was not. It was extremely hard to wear. But in the end, in the end, we take this yoke from Jesus, and we realize that he carries us with him. In the end, we have to come to the same truth that the Apostle Paul expresses to the Romans, that God loves us, that in Christ he has restored us in spite of the fact that we often get it wrong. How do I end this? I, I love it when Paul does this. You can just end it very abruptly. You can just say as Paul does, thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Amen.
should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home, you who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word as they carry out your work. Hear us, O oh God. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all you have made. Rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O oh God. God of the nations, you desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels, national, state province, and local to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, 
and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all in need, especially to those whom we name in our hearts or out loud at this time. Make your presence known among all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship around word and sacrament. Encourage children in their learning and growing and watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. Hear us, O oh God. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all the context we encounter. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. be with you. Check with the keys.
God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. <clears throat> it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he God most merciful, O oh God, our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the earth was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath. And the psalmist cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered into our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under the oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O God, you are breath. Send your spirit upon this meal. O God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O God, most majestic. O God, most motherly, O oh God, our strength and our song, show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Holy Spirit of our risen Savior, Jesus. Life in you, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table, 
come and eat what is good. given and shed for you. Body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. God bless you. Body and blood of Christ. Oh, we got somebody back here. Okay, that's fine. Be happy to come. Body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Anybody else? Okay.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen, keep you, and unite us in God's grace on this day and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. 
May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, Amen.